Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to take a look at theming the Rad Auto Complete Box. That will allow us to make the Rad Auto Complete Box look and feel consistent with the rest of your application. Let's begin in Visual Studio by creating a new project. This will be of type Win WPF application, of course, and we'll call it Auto Complete Box Themes. When Visual Studio is ready to go, we're going to right-click on References and Add References. Now, here our recent references are the themes, but if we look at the path to these themes, we can see that they're under Program Files, x86, Telerik, Rad Controls for WPF Q3. So let's go ahead and open up a browser and navigate to C, Program Files x86, scroll down to Telerik, open up RAD Controls for WPFQ3, binaries, no XAML, get the latest libraries, and when we scroll down, not only do we see the DLLs for the controls, but we also see the DLLs for the themes, and this is where we pick all of these up if they're not in the recent reference manager. But in any case, we do want them all, Click on all of them, and then click OK to add all of these themes to our project. We also need to add the Telerik controls, so let's go and find the Assemblies extensions and scroll down to Telerik. We want Telerik Windows Controls input, and we want Telerik Windows Controls. With those added to the project, we can open up our reference window and see that we have the controls and input as well as all the themes that we just added. We're ready to quickly add three classes to our project. These are the same three that we used in the previous video, so I will do them quite quickly. The first is going to be our contact class. And as you saw in the previous video, this consists of a first name and a last name, both a backing variable and a public property. Let's go ahead and add a second class to our application. This will be the data class. And the data class is going to contain all of the data that we might otherwise retrieve from a database or from a web service. Here we're going to hard code all of those contacts. We do need to add the using statement to support observable collection, so we'll add systems collections object model and that class is ready to go and the third class that we're going to add is for our view model and the view model class has an instance of the data and it has an observable collection contacts list that we're going to bind to we'll populate that in the constructor and then bind to it from our view let's go over to main window.xaml once again the first thing that we need to do is to add resources to this page. The resources consist of a style of the view model and the data template. For the view model to work, we need to declare the local namespace. And then we're going to drop in our completed grid. The grid sets the data context, and it is also going to need the Telerik namespace. Let's go up to the top and add the Telerik namespace by hand. We find the Telerik namespace and drop that in, and we can scroll down and take a look at the grid. And what is new here is within the stack panel, we now have three rad buttons. One says Office Black, one says Metro, one says Windows 7. Each of them has a click event handler. And we're going to take a look at what we do to implement those buttons so that they change the look and feel by changing the themes. To do that, the first thing we want to do is set our initial theme. So we're going to go to app.xaml, and in app.xaml, we're going to create a resource dictionary. We're going to describe merged dictionaries, and within that, we are ready to describe the three resource dictionaries that will make up our first theme, and that is Office Black. 
with our three resource dictionary lines in place, you can see that we have systems, windows, XAML, and then under the Telerik namespace, windows control and windows control input XAML. All of those with the office black theme. Let's save that, return to our view, and notice that we have these click event handlers, office black click, metro click, windows seven click. Let's go implement those in mainwindow.xaml.cs. The first event handler is office black click, and you can see that the first thing it does is it clears the merged dictionaries, and then it adds new resource dictionaries to the merged dictionaries, and adds in, in this case, the same three that we had originally, the office black, and that will allow us to have a button that will return to the office black theme. For the second button, the event handler from MetroClick again clears the merged dictionaries and adds in three resource dictionaries, but this time it's with the theme Metro. And finally, for Windows 7, we do the same thing. We clear the merged dictionaries and add in the ones for Windows 7. Let's build and run the application to see the effect that that has. When we type, we get a drop down. If we click on the Metro button, we switch from the Office Black to the Metro theme. If we click on Windows 7, we switch over to the Windows 7 theme. As we switch between the themes, you can see the outline of the box changing. The changes are somewhat subtle, but this makes our theme consistent with the rest of our application. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. Thank you very much. I look forward to talking with you again very soon.